Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Poker Club on the Nintendo Switch, a take on the card game that's coming with a little bit more style than most in this genre, but does that elevate the experience and is it a good fit for the Nintendo Switch? For me, it definitely sounded like a perfect one, but I gotta say up front, it has some issues that may be key for people, so with that luck, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So first off, I am no pro at poker, it's a game I enjoy with friends on occasion and that is really about it. That said, I've always been a little fascinated by the gaming landscape of poker and the fact I can play without my own money on the line. I kind of enjoy the slow burn and the number of skills that come together in a game. I won't though be talking about rules today however so just be aware of that, that's also a perfect place to start though, you can absolutely jump in here as a beginner but just know it's tutorial, it's basically a text rundown of the style of gameplay so 10 Texas Hold'em tournament modes including freezeouts, shootouts and more, most of which honestly were new to me as well. So poker in general it's a combination of not only skill and finding that best hand but bluffs and reading your opponents. Digital cards has always made things just that little more challenging because the only bluff you get here is how your opponent acts with their chips and you know the behaviour they display with them. Is there basically repetition? Do they take risks and so on? We don't get the human reaction, the interaction, the emotion that tells. Before we do get to how Poker Club attempts to tackle that in some way though, let's talk modes. It's relatively mode rich honestly and the big one would have to be the Poker Tour. The idea here, progress through what is a campaign going from richer to richer locations and tackling challenges is actually free attached to each. These can be as simple as win the tournament or maybe more specific think like win with a pair. It's a nice distraction, it adds a little progression to things outside of building up that bank account and level. The only thing I will say poker purists may not appreciate the game essentially forcing your hand in this what is I guess a campaign mode. Challenges like win by going all in they seem to force risk in a game that's typically so strategic and calculated by design. I ended up enjoying it though honestly you know that progression as I said was fun and you'll even earn unlockables for your character. Alongside this then you can get a little bit more traditional this daily table that is basically cash play meaning you can jump in and walk away as you please, no be the last player standing or forfeit your cash. There's custom play as well so adapt the rules as you please from speed of play to player type to the buy in amount to daily which is actually a randomised set of rules. The two biggest ads to gameplay though, clubs as per the name, you can essentially join clubs, win together, earn rewards together, it's a very cool system if you can find a group to get together with. And then there's also going to be tournaments as well, these can be custom built to your liking or you can jump into the preset online options, these rotate frequently, they'll require certain buy-ins and they start at a very specific time. I saw options here though anywhere from 6 players up to 216. This all said though I have a few big problems, first the AI bots, the game autofill seats typically with these players, you can identify them by the club name MAD, so M-A-D-D -D at your table, you can turn them off in custom mode but nowhere else, they are just incredibly unrealistic, never have I seen so many all in plays in my life, they're constantly going big and there seems to be little logic behind it. Likewise, this is typically when there's no cards on the table, rather they are attempting to steal the blind and they just kind of get carried away. The personality as well from player to player, it seems to be very similar as well in this bot world. I couldn't really notice too much difference. This then leads to my next big problem though, expect to see them a lot. This game is built around the concept of online play at all times, you know, build a level, become a champion, so even in Korea, it's hoping you find online players. I actually didn't manage it in the career mode so I constantly had to face them and that made the challenges particularly painstaking. Why? Because one challenge for example was win 10 hands, that's near impossible though when your opponent is going all in on the second turn, their programming it's not balanced to the game's demands. Jumping into the base kind of online mode then custom games as well, there was never a huge amount of players on, I'd find maybe a few 6 player tables with 4 or so players on them at a time, that surprised me given the fact that this game has cross play with PC and Xbox players as well. 
The thing I will say here though is buts, they absolutely have their time and place and that is offline practice or quick games here and there and that's actually why I picked this up. I was traveling the weekend, I wanted a dash of poker on the drive. It turns out after installing it, this game is online only. You cannot play without an internet connection, almost bypassing a lot of the reasons many out there who own a Switch might pick this game up. It is beyond me why they would not include offline. It also means then you can never pause a game even when it's bots only, it may be a small thing, but sometimes you can't afford the long run time that poker can go on, so you gotta have that time to commit. You know, some of these games, they ran well over an hour. Other issues occur as well in gameplay, a few times I couldn't interact with buttons on screen for some reason to call, so I had to wait for the timer to expire. Another scenario, I entered a career game, no one joined, and then there was no bot introduced, so I sat there for 15 minutes waiting. With no luck though, I decided to leave the room. The problem, I had to forfeit my entire buy-in. That was a couple of like thousand chips because I was choosing to leave myself. That seems extremely unfair when there's no one at the table with me. It's a shame as well, it shows a lot of potential, but it has some glaring issues at the same time from general functionality to the AI opponents. Another big issue though, let's jump into graphics and talk about that. So Poker Club has been designed as a social experience, get together with people online, join clubs, have that real challenge, but also one of its big standout areas to kind of embrace this is also the game's shortcoming. That is going to be the characters around the table. The main reason, the why behind having them there is to read tells, to understand emotional reaction and at first it's a novelty that makes you feel very much like you're there at the table, you know it's immersive, that's definitely a good thing, but the novelty wears thin quickly because it's not a representation of that player's reaction, you know of course it's not when it's someone online, but the same can even be said for AI players too. It's basically a few very simple canned animations, one each for win, lose, check, raise and call and that is it. Pretty much all the characters do the exact same thing. I liked it for maybe the first 15 minutes but then it quickly just became this almost pointless distraction that slowed down pacing. Almost like the intro of a sports game, you know, you enter the stadium, you watch it maybe the first couple of times, it's fun, but then you skip it every time after. Here there's no skip option and every turn they'll check their hand like they instantly forgot the two cards they have facing down. Outside of that visually the unlockable gear is a nice touch, you got things that can go on the table, clothing options, but the character creator itself at its core is definitely weak. Most look the same and the expressions are if anything a little creepy. When they win a hand they smile then all of a sudden it goes dead behind the eyes like someone just switched off the emotional category of a functioning droid. Watch for it though, you'll definitely see what I mean. The best thing visually, the variety in environments, a nice selection, it very much feels like it escalates with your skill and progression from boxing rings almost lock stock and two smoking barrel style to the biggest tournaments in the world. Finally then I really do like the first person viewpoint as well, it's great for immersion but there is a top down view as well, just know though with top down it's pretty small in handheld mode but also I noticed Duck Damned handheld the all important cards they're actually relatively low resolution and pixelated which is a shame and a bit of a miss given the fact the cards they are let's face it the essence of the entire game. The only other minor visual quirks, a few scenarios players didn't kind of move around me and then also I had a few hands where the cards disappeared from the table so they were essentially looking at thin air. To finish on a positive though, the UI, the all important user interface, it's nice, clean, simple to use. In my eyes that's going to be one of the more important elements of the experience. So audio finally, I'll keep it quick, weak voice acting that has no lip sync so I presume this is internal dialogue almost but it's just repetitive in its design and you'll hear it all very quickly. The actual quality of the acting I'd describe it as varies, it goes from extremely robotic if not actually it is robotic up to I'd say maybe average at best. Then though this is reinforced with some very chilled music which absolutely makes sense and a few minor environmental sounds to build up the locations. I think it's fine though audio wise, I played my own music personally and I think that will be the same for most out there. So overall Poker Club it's a great concept that tries a few new ideas which are no question you know unique, meaning that first person mode with players surrounding you. The problem though, they just don't add anything to the gameplay outside of that first person viewpoint because it's just impossible to give real tells, it quickly devolves into what is those few canned animations. 
Likewise then, it's got some weird little bugs, you know, players not turning up, meaning I forfeited my bank, visual quirks, and gameplay that's decent enough and absolutely works, but it's got an army of bots that may be the most aggressive or most stupid I've ever seen in a game of poker. Sure, in real life, you might get that one wild card who tries to steal the blind by going all in, but that would be extremely rare. It would not be every, let's say, three or four hands. Even things like a five bet here, that's gonna be frequent. Then we have the next issue, probably the biggest, the online community just seems small, meaning you'll need to face these bots frequently, and there's not even offline play, and internet connection is required at all times, and this is when the bots to me would have been excusable. It's just so strange at times, it's got good ideas, but the execution is lacking. That said though, look, when I did get with a group online, which wasn't difficult to find, fortunately, just not a huge amount of options, I'll say that, I had fun, I focused on the cards, and its mechanics were definitely solid, so yeah, I think this one, all the new elements it tries mostly miss, unfortunately, but I did enjoy that first person viewpoint, and I did like its concept of clubs to join. Fortunately though, replayability is here, I will be returning in the future for online play against, you know, other human players, as well as tournaments. An average 5 out of 10 from me, if you're desperate for poker, come here for sure, but expect to do some digging and just figuring out what works for you. I only recommend it though, if you are willing to play online against real people, that's kind of the stipulation with this one. Will you be adding this one to the library then though, or are you hoarding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner, it helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.